a common thing that's out there is, you know, you hear people about street piping. We want to get the maximum power is necessarily the best answer for a street car because you can put a muffler that's a perforated core straight through three inch that will in effect do better to flow than that straight pipe. What's going on guys, it's Justin here and we're at Magnaflow and we're here with Rich and we're doing some airflow testing. You know, this might just be a airflow bench like you traditionally see for cylinder heads, but you guys have adapted to do exhaust stuff and uh, it's really cool. Yeah, we're here to basically look and analyze what we're doing on airflow for one thing and understanding capacity we want to know what tubing sizes are going to work for the airflow demands of the different motors that are out there. But we also want to understand what we're doing with our straight through mufflers. So a common thing that's out there is, you know, you hear people about straight piping. We want to get the maximum power. And it's not really always the case where a straight through pipe, and this is a piece of 18 inch, three inch long tubing, is necessarily the best answer for a street car. Uh, because you can put a muffler that's a perforated core straight through three inch that will in effect do better to flow than that straight pipe. It's absolutely crazy. And I was not a believer until we put the proof in the pudding. And I think we should show the people and then explain why, because the why is the golden question. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of things that come up too, because uh, through, I guess, what would be uh, the, the common knowledge, whether they're doing reading and they're, or just looking at practical you know, uh, information that they've seen, it's like, well, all the race cars, they don't really run a muffler, do they? Well. Think about it in this effect too. Uh, we're gonna show the airflow capabilities, but what we can't do is defy the laws of gravity and we're talking about weight. This weighs tremendously less and you've seen what they do to race cars, carbon fiber, Inconel, titanium to try to reserve power. This is 14 pounds. So while we are able to flow better in a race car, they don't need the sound requirements to be met because they're not on the street, but they also don't have to worry so much about weight. So if you don't have to worry about sound requirements uh, or you do have to worry about sound requirements and you don't have to worry about weight, a muffler still is a good choice because it's not gonna be the part that holds you back on airflow. So yeah, let's see what this is all about. This is crazy to me. So we're gonna go ahead and push about 1000 CFM through the flow bench at 25 inches of water, create an air column in here that's a steady 25 inches of water to determine what we can get airflow through this 18 inch piece of pipe. And you're going to see it normalizes here and it's just about 635 CFM and that's for that 18 inch piece of pipe. Now this of course is about the same height and of course it's the same diameter. It's just a perforated core. Yeah, there's no real black magic here. It's, nope. it's all science. Just past 630. 669, almost 670. So we're picking up almost 35 CFM, which sounds totally counterintuitive. If you can even hear it, you can listen to the sound difference that it, when it's running through the muffler, it's kind of missing some of that middle baritone note from the straight pipe. That's the dampening material doing its job, but doing its job doesn't limit the capacity of the muffler to flow air. So to your question, why is this doing what it's doing? And you know, we kind of talked a little bit earlier and sound and air are two totally separate events, but yeah, tell us why this is, has 30 more CFMs because it's a really cool answer. <laughs> well, you got to think about it to the same effect of why, you know, why is a golf ball engineered the way it is? Um, you've got this nice smooth surface, let's call it ping pong ball. And let's say it was the same weight as the golf ball. And as it's traveling through the air, it's got that full uh, surface area that it's got to push through the air and it causes a ton of turbulence because there's more frictional resistance. That also causes the air to be disturbed and it will actually affect the way the ball travels through the air. Uh, that means it's pushing different pressure differentials because of the resistance. Now, if you're talking about what the inside of a perf core does, it's very similar when you look inside to what you would see on the edge of the golf ball. So you're gonna have these indentations, but also we're talking about reducing the surface area. So imagine this pipe is here, the perf pattern that we use will remove about 37% of the surface area. Now, just removing the surface area is not enough. That's frictional resistance we're taking into effect, but we have air columns traveling in here. And much like you were talking about earlier, the air has to travel through into that packing material and it has to balance the pressure. Obviously, we have this high pressure area in, it's gonna keep pushing through that perforation until it pressurizes this outside chamber until they're balanced. And when they're balanced is what you see here, you'll watch the CFM continue to rise until we reach the point where it can't flow anymore. 
And as the pressure on the outside of the perforation meets the pressure on the inside, we're not exchanging air anymore. That, that column simply travels, except for now, it's using those little uh, perforation indentations as a spot where it can travel faster undisturbed because it's not touching the surface area of the tubing. So we pick up speed, we pick up efficiency, we have a less turbulent airflow, hence about another 35 CFM. Yeah, that is absolutely crazy. And I love the science aspect of it. So it's, I mean, it's essentially aerodynamics in a muffler. Basically, and that is at full laminar flow. And of course, what we have in vehicles, we're talking about pulse flow because we got all those cylinders firing. and We have positive and negative pressure going through, which affects that a little bit. But what we use this for is to understand capacity. And a capacity here, me flowing this at 1,000 CFM, is to kind of demonstrate what one tube in an exhaust system that's maybe making about 500 horsepower, that kind of magic number of two CFM is what we see, of airflow is what we need to have like a lossless exhaust. Uh, using that number, we kind of can approximate, is a three inch tube adequate for that particular motor? Is a three inch core for that inadequate size for that vehicle? And then really the only thing we're doing beyond that is, is this enough sound dampening? So is this enough muffler? Uh, combine what we do for capacity to make sure we can make the performance and then combine what we do for the size of the chamber to create the sound we want. That goes into why we choose certain mufflers for certain engines based upon what they're being used for, whether it's more of a track car or if it's more of a street car, we'll, we'll change the size of the body. Yeah, and that's the cool part. You guys have a muffler that basically fits every application you could think of. You have some. You have you have the right, you know, gift choices, which is cool. And that's the big part of what we do here is we want to make sure that we get the the end consumer what they're looking for. If you're in our universal line, we'll make recommendations based upon airflow for the diameter, and then from then on out, it's the casing size to determine how much noise dampening. Obviously, you can imagine if we ran one of our little four-inch uh, straight through kind of uh, cylinder style ones. It's a much less packing. It's gonna change the amount of sound dampening. Uh, if we run one of our five by 11s, the larger muffler, it's more material. And as you can imagine, what we're trying to do is all that sound pressure wave that's inside. We're trying to absorb that energy and not let it reflect back in to create more tailpipe noise. So the bigger the casing, the more sound deadening you're gonna get. So it's kind of the easy rule of thumb with the Magnaflow straight through mufflers. Bigger mufflers are gonna be more quiet overall relative to the input sound. Yeah, that is, like I said, this is cool and it's been a lot of fun learning about this and the why it's doing this. So thanks for teaching us a little bit of science today. Welcome. So as always guys, thanks for coming and checking out the video. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Summit Racing YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any content like this or more. So until next time guys, I'm Justin with Summit Racing. We have Rich here again and we'll see you later.